and many Cubans resigned themselves to never seeing another competition again. Fortunately, this didn't happen. Several competitions were held afterwards, including Dutch Open 2003, many Caltech competitions, and US Nationals 2004. The WCA was created, which enabled many competitions to take place all over the world. A new world championship seemed inevitable. The first inklings of Worlds 2005 happened very soon after Worlds 2003 ended. Dan Gosby came on the Yahoo Speed Solving Group and announced that he had been informed of a major championship taking place in 2005, either in Europe or North America. Many people were excited, and speculation began as to where it could be held. Most posters were hoping for Europe, but there were one or two people who wanted it to be in Australia. However, this quickly vanished when someone pointed out how impractical Australia is for most people to get to, making it rather unlikely that any world championship would ever be held there in the future. The next information about the championship came from Seven Towns themselves. In response to a concern that Jessica Friedrich had about the next Worlds not taking place for another 21 years, David Headley Jones, the business development director of Seven Towns, posted on the board they had managed to work out a good deal with the Disney Pop Century Resort. A few negotiations needed to be worked out, but it was looking very likely that it would be held there in 2005. And indeed, on April the 27th, 2005, the competition was officially announced on the Rubik's website and in the Yahoo group, with discounts on hotel rooms and theme parks. Much like Worlds 2003, Rubik's had their name very much on the competition. However, they weren't just sponsoring the World Championship, they were organising it, giving them more power than normal over how it was run. As a result, this was the only World Championship, aside from 1982, where all the cubes were Rubik's brand. This caused a lot of controversy in the community at the time, as East Sheen cubes had really taken off by then. Nevertheless, the company held their ground, and the nascent WCA agreed to their demands. The events held at Worlds 2005 were very similar to 2003, with one major exception. Pyraminx, for whatever reason, was not held. My personal belief is that of the three non-Rubik's puzzles in the WCA, Megaminx, Pyraminx, and Square One, Pyraminx was the least popular of all three of them, having been held at less competitions than the other two, and this is why they didn't include it. It doesn't seem likely, though. Worlds 2005 had a couple of events which have never been recognised as official, but they were champions for anyway. Speedblind was held, and only one person entered. Geir Ugelstad of Norway, who took home the title with a time of 31.36 seconds after memorising for three hours. The strangest event that took place was One-Handed Magic, for which three people entered. Bob Burton became the champion, with a single time of 3.89. 4x4 and 5x5 blindfolded were both held, but only one person entered the former, and just two people entered the latter. Neither managed a single successful solve, so there was no world champion of either big blind event in 2005. The 3x3 world champion was anyone's guess at the beginning. In the first round, Jean Pont managed to take first place with a 12.51 single solve, but dropped to 7th place in the second round with a 16.87 average. Shotaro Makasumi, who was 3rd in the first round with a 13.4 single, took 1st place in the second with a 14.71 average. In addition, there were 10 other finalists. Brent Morgan, Andy Kamen, Chris Hardwick, Tyson Mao, Matt Walter, Ryan Patricio, Yuki Hayashi, John Morris, Leon Lowe, and Edouard Chambon. In the end, Jean Pont redeemed himself, taking the title of Rubik's Cube World Champion 2005, with an average time of 15.1 seconds in the final. Edouard Chambon took second with a 16 flat average, and Shotaro Makasumi took third with a 16.07 average. Overall, Worlds 2005 was a strong follow-up to 2003. Despite the oddities and things that would never happen nowadays, it ran smoothly, with a healthy number of events and competitors. Nothing would stop the World Championship from happening again, and with 2007 being the 25-year anniversary of the first ever World Championship, things were going to be very interesting. Ooh, extra bit. 
Yes, uh, this is just a quick announcement to say that I'm going to be doing a Q&A as my next video because I've been doing this for two years and I've earned the right to follow the crowd. There will be a link in the description box thingy to a Google form where you can ask any question you want and I will do my best to answer every question I get. Yes, whether or not that's a good idea is debatable but I'm gonna try it. Just know that I probably won't answer all questions seriously. I'll close the form at 10pm on the 20th of January, Sydney time, and I'll put what time that is in various time zones on screen right now. So, go and ask questions, it's all anonymous, and it'll be fun! Hopefully.